morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you so much for joining me here on the redpillinvestor.com as well as my YouTube channel at Sell More Homes Now. Thank you very much for all of your kind comments as well as all the sharing that you've been doing on all the various platforms I've seen that you've been doing and all the emails that I've been getting. Wow, I really, really have been overwhelmed uh, by your uh, by your gratefulness and, and, and by all the comments that you've been giving me. So let me just go ahead and say right from the outset how thankful I am uh, for each and every one of you for all the sharing that you've been doing and telling me that this has been helpful for you. I do have some good news to report before we go ahead and start prospecting for the day. I do have some good news to report. Uh, as you may or may not recall, a couple days ago, uh, I believe, uh, I don't recall which one it is, but I think it was the, uh, the one I labeled appointment setting. So if you're going to go back through the actual prospecting videos, look for the one that says appointment setting, you know, uh, you know, two for sale by owners and a, an expired or in any event, look for that one and listen to that one. What you're going to hear, you're going to hear me set a listing appointment with a fellow for that day where I had to compete with several other agents. And so, uh, I did go out and go to that appointment. I did go ahead and record that appointment. Uh, of course, it's sanitized for uh, security, of course, but it is on the premium podcast. If you're a premium podcast member at the redpillinvestor.com, uh, then you could certainly just go ahead and log in and you'll be able to press play and you can hear how I made that presentation. Uh, and then uh, if you're not a premium podcast member, certainly recommend you check that out. It's uh, just a small donation that you go out and check that out. And uh, then you'll be able to see what happened there. And ultimately, I did go ahead and end up listing that property today. So that is amazing. I got uh, great news for it there. Uh, that is uh, not by my skill, of course, but by uh, the power of Jesus. So thank him for that. Let's go ahead and get started. I got some great news for you today. We've got powerful news that you're going to want to know for your real estate career. Uh, and if you have any comments, questions, or any other things, feel free to put your comments there and I will certainly address them as soon as I can. Let's go ahead and get started. Take this to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we just thank you for this day. We're grateful that we're above the ground. Boy, there are so many people who are sick, so many people who are hurt, so many people around us that just have a real tough go in life. And Lord, you've just helped us. You've blessed us. You've made us to where we have the ability to go forth and work. And God, we ask that you'd help us to be helpful and mindful today. Help us to be grateful for those around us. Help us, help us to be uh, helpful to the communities around us. Open up our ears, open up our eyes that we might learn from one another today so we can go out and help the people in our communities to the glory of Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get cracking. Let's press start on the vortex and dial away. So first off, uh, we always start, as you know, calling all the brand new expires. We call all the brand new expired listings. Um, we call them simply because, you know, they're out there and the, they're going to list. You know, if, if, if they've got a property that just went off the market. Hello, you reached Maya If they've got a property that just went off the market, then... Um, more than half, statistically, you, know, you can check your multiple listing service to see what yours says, but you could usually figure more than half are going to relist their property within the next 72 hours. And if you're a realtor, this is important for you, especially if you're looking at this as a listing opportunity. If you're looking at calling people for a listing opportunity, then it is extremely important that you contact an expired listing within the first 72 hours because, as I mentioned, over half of them are going to make that decision to list with somebody within three days and then, boom, it's over, right? If you're an investor, if you're trying to buy those properties before they list, it's even more important that you get out there and get to them quickly. Now, certainly, as I've mentioned, call has been forwarded to an automated voice. As I've mentioned through dozens and dozens, oops, there we go. Hopefully the volume is still there. I just noticed that that thing was pressed as mute. Oh my goodness. I hope that that was not muted this entire time. That would be very unfortunate. Uh, if uh, I see somebody watching there, if, uh, if, if you've been able to hear this, please type a Y or a yes. Let me know that you've been able to hear the entire thing so far. <laughs> 
<laughs> because that would be very unfortunate if for some reason uh, the first four minutes of this was unable to be heard. That would be very, uh, very sad. Uh, if, if in case that was the case and uh, the first five minutes of this uh, podcast and uh, video was uh, mute, uh, then uh, let me go ahead and say welcome to everybody one more time. I will edit that part if it is uh, if it is blank, if it's not blank, well then welcome again. Thank you for joining us here on the podcast at the, at the Red Pill Investor as well as my YouTube channel at Sell More Homes. Now, uh, uh, just a, a brief thing we're going to start talking about here today as the phone is ringing in the background. If you've uh, not heard it ding yet so far, you soon will. Uh, what we're going to talk about in the news today, we've got a lot of important stuff. The first thing I want to bring to your attention, and I think if you're a realtor, you probably want to share this on your social media because I know your realtor friends are going to want to hear your opinion on this. They're not going to all care about what I have to say, but they're going to want to hear what you have to say. Because after I tell you what is going down, you're going to have some opinions. If you have not heard 18 hours ago, 18 hours ago. Okay, this is May 24th. It's Friday. It is nine o'clock in the morning here in Tucson, Arizona. 18 hours ago or so, U.S. antitrust officials, this was uh, as of 5.17 p.m. yesterday, U.S. antitrust in, uh, officials were investigating potentially anti-competitive practices in the residential real estate brokerage business with a focus on compensation to brokers and restrictions on access to their listings. Now, this is coming, okay, from Bloomberg. Uh, Bloomberg Real Estate is uh, coming out uh, basically saying that they're reporting this, uh, that essentially that there was a, essentially a, it wasn't a subpoena, but there was a, it was a civil investigation complaint, right? Which is essentially the same thing as a subpoena. Uh, it's, a, it's a demand issued by the Justice Department to CoreLogic. Okay, uh, which provides the real estate data to government agencies, lenders, and other housing market participants, right? And so, essentially, what they're alleging is that uh, that the the real estate industry has has you know stifled competition amongst brokerages. Uh, let me just go ahead and make sure that that dialer is running. In fact, yeah, it's still running. Just apparently, nobody's picking up the phone. Maybe they maybe they know that uh, it's a realtor calling. Uh, let's see. So anyway, the residential real estate in. Uh, oh. Hi, this is Carl Krenzel. How are you today? Hi. Um, I'm not certain if I've got the right person. I think I might. Uh, are you the owner of that property over there on Scorpius? Correct. Oh, yes, ma'am. Is is that property sold? No, I'm on a sign with, a, with an agent this afternoon. Oh. That would give me a better deal than 3%. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, so you're 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 listing your home today with a, an agent, right? Oh, right. great. Okay, perfect. Okay, well, again, my name's Carl. I didn't mean to be rude. I I, I never I never did get your name, Patricia. Oh, Patricia. okay. Oh, hi, Patricia. All right, no worries. Uh, if you don't mind me asking, uh, how much are you going to be asking for the property uh, now that you've listed it or will be listing it? Uh, yeah, I, I was thinking to lower it at least ten thousand dollars. So probably it's going to be between 310 to 315. Wow. But, uh, okay. I sounds like a good a deal. Of, uh, excuse me? I said it sounds like a good deal. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I didn't have a uh, traffic. So um, I'll leave. I mean, I, I, I wanted to try to sell myself and mm -hmm. actually pay a fee to appear on the MLS. Sure. And, um, and, uh, the, Three weeks, and it was one customer per week. Gosh. I don't know if that's normal. I'm not a realtor. I don't know. I just felt like I could have more people calling. So I thought that maybe it was about the price. So I'm thinking of lowering it on just a little more. I yeah. understand. So you think it's a good deal then? Well, you know, I, I mean, it sounds like it. I haven't seen your home, of course. So, I mean, uh, it would be difficult mm -hmm. for me to say. But just, I mean, based on what you're telling me, it sounds like it's okay. Uh, I'm curious, which uh, oh. which company did you end up deciding to to list it with? Antigua. Tarantino. Oh, great. No problem. I'm, I'm uh, very familiar with the company. It's a good company. I know them. I'm, I'm wondering, and you said you have not signed the paperwork yet? No. Okay. Uh, it will be this afternoon. It's actually a friend of my son that, uh, um, you know, the, the saddest thing of all, uh, what is your name again? Oh, I apologize. My name is Carl. Carl Krenzel. Carl, yeah. Yes, ma'am. You did say Carl, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, uh, that, I, I, I got a bunch of culture realtors, but mm -hmm. 
it, all of them was just to lease my house. Oh, so gosh. Those, uh, the only three ones that they brought them, you mm -hmm. know, they sold on the MLS mm -hmm. and they brought them uh, directly to the house. I do have a lock box in there. So, and, um, so that, that's, that's kind of made me sad, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, uh, what's willing to pay that 3%. Mm -hmm. Actually had a 2.5 and I raised it to 3%, mm -hmm. but, um, uh, um, uh, I just got that real just calling, like, I can leave you home. Gosh, and, and yeah. Uh -huh. well, you know, I'm, I'm wondering, I'm wondering, uh, you know, you mentioned that you said it's your, your, is it your son-in-law or it was your son's friend? No, it's, it's a friend that, uh, that graduated with my son. Oh, and that's nice. why he gave me a better deal than... I then understand. 3%. Okay. I'm an investor. So I have other homes that oh, I want to be selling. Oh, really? That's why he wanted. I think that was a smart thing. You know, nobody offered me before. Well, you know that. All the ones that they called me, I told them that I was an investor. I'm, I'm going to start buying smaller homes. Yeah. Um, actually, I do have a lot of equity in this home, around 200. Okay. That I'm trying at least to buy two little homes, two little, little ones, you mm -hmm. know, nothing fancy. And uh, so he he was the only one who said, you know, uh, um, I can offer you less than two percent sure. to keep you as, as a customer. So that works. I understand. <laughs> no, know? I understand. And, but, I, and I'm sorry. You, yeah. What did you say your name was again? Patricia. I'm sorry, Patricia. Patricia, what was your last name? Jorgensen. You know, the funny thing is, I mean, I, I, I invest here in Tucson. I'm a broker here in Tucson who invests, and I've been here over 20 years. And and like yourself, I've owned. Uh, several properties, rented them out, sold them. I I, I understand uh -huh. what you're exactly where you're coming from, and I'm just shocked. <laughs> I've never met you. I I thought I've, I've met everybody, but gosh, you you uh, you slipped my radar. Well, I'm glad to meet you finally. And you mentioned that you've got other properties that that you're buying and selling because you're an investor. Is that is that something you're currently doing? Yeah, and actually, I'm I'm trying to get rid of my big homes, and especially the ones with pools. I managed them for 20 years, and I'm tired of that. I understand. And I want to just do little ones. Okay. And so the first opportunity that I have to sell, you know, um, I got a, I, I got a, a, a good offer. I cannot tell you how much because I don't right. want to put him in trouble. Oh, no, but of course. Uh, apparently, the agency considered, you know, as an investor, that that, that I deserve a better deal. and. And, and the thing I, I, I was going to keep trying, but, uh, you know, I'm going to take a vacation two weeks with my kids and my husband and, oh. and at Yellowstone, I probably wasn't going to be able to get my calls, you know? So I said, you know, for that, for that, um, percentage, they can do everything. I'll be fine. Sure. I understand. Well, Patricia, you oh, know, yeah. I'm, I'm wondering, is there a time that you and I could get together and just meet, you know, face to face? Cause if you've got other properties and you buy, I'd love to meet with you because I'm in this business with, uh, the, the, the foreclosures, REOs, as well as the, uh, investor properties, duplexes and whatnot all right, over that's town. That's actually I, what I'm going to do, you know, to yeah. buy homes. When, when's it, you when know, can I buy you some coffee? You know, then, Excuse me? When can I buy you some coffee? Are you, 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 can oh, I buy you a cup of coffee sometime oh, this well, week? Let me see. Let me see because uh, we're going to be leaving next week. Uh, um, but uh, mm, I can, I can text you to this number and let, and let you yeah, know. You absolutely. Know, yeah. This is my cell phone. Yeah. Is, is that your cell phone number here? The number I've called, is this your cell it phone? Is. Perfect. It is my cell okay, phone. Okay. Great. Yeah. You know, I'm wondering in this house on Scorpius, you know, you, uh, you mentioned that, you know, you were going to list it with, uh, your friend's, uh, I'm sorry, your son's friend, uh, because he was willing to work with you on the commission. I'm wondering which is more important to you. Is it more important that you pay less commission or that you make more money? Which is more important to you? Both. Okay. To be honest, well, then I have several homes. Okay. I did my math of how much I was going to be paying in commission, and okay. it's a lot of money. Girl. Okay, because you're buying those other two. Uh, because I'm, I'm gonna be buying. I mean, when I buy, I know it's yeah. a commission, but uh, in order to be to, to to start buying, I do have to sell some of the others, some okay. of the big ones, and, and and you know, it's a lot of money. The six percent, for right. example, my biggest home is around five hundred. Just took the math there. Six percent is yep. a lot of money. Well, you know, I, I'm not money. sure. And, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, well, that's why I said you know, well, and I did. Many things, you know, the only thing that I didn't do was in my, my daughter is an architect and she said, mom, 
you shouldn't hire somebody to take professional pictures. So that's the only thing I didn't do. But I was really willing to do it. But my husband said, you know, you, you're you doing the open houses. You're doing a lot of work, which I admire you. You put it on Silo, Trillia, MLA, Facebook, et cetera, you know, uh, Craigslist. But the thing is that we're going to be gone for almost two weeks. And, 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 and for this percentage, you know, it, 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 I think it's worth it. If it was a 3% like others, no. Let's give it a try and, and sell our assets by ourselves. So mm-hmm. my neighbor told me a house in less than a month, and she just put it on Silo. You know, I'm so uh, I'm certainly I'm certainly hearing you there, and and so I guess what I want to make sure I'm clear in my understanding is that, you know, I'm wondering if 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 you, are you committed to this path with this fellow? I guess I mean I guess what I'm wondering is if you knew that by listing with that younger fellow that just you know is willing to cut his commission to make a deal happen or whatever if you if you knew that by listing with him, your home might potentially not close at all. I mean, you might get a contract on it, but it might not ever close. If you knew that that was a potentiality, would you even consider that? Or would you consider maybe changing your plans just a smidge? I, to be honest, I think that uh, old agencies are, are about the same in service. Most, it really most people do. It of the realtor, I think, of the realtor. You know, uh, how much um, input he puts in trying to sell that home. But uh, because every realtor tells me that all oh, my company promoting Thailand mm-hmm. and in some other mm-hmm. countries and blah, blah, blah. Okay, yeah. But really, I'm not that crazy. I mean, as long as I get the, the basic service, you know, at least that it gets promoted in Arizona, in the state of Arizona, that appears on the MLS, and, and it has access to every realtor in town, mm-hmm. because it doesn't mean he's going to sell it. Maybe you can sell it, you know, you see, you bring a buyer, and, mm-hmm. and boom, you know. Right. The listing thing, I will say, is the easiest part. I will say that the hard part is the one who brings the customer. Is that a fact? Uh, Interesting. It's my opinion, okay? I don't want to offend or anything. No, it doesn't bother easy. me at all. I think it's, a, yeah, it's, it's easy to put it on the MLS and boom, the done is job. You know, that, that's that, a, that, yeah, that job. that's a very. But finding that, the, the client, bringing the people. And, 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 and negotiating the price and so and so, the rest that you know, I think that's, that deserves that commission. I think, you know, I, I think it should be, I don't know, 1.5 <laughs> listing a home and mm-hmm. the rest for the work. sells the house. <laughs> you know, that's a, that's a commonly held belief. I mean, I, I wish I could say I've, I, I've done this for 23 years and I wish I could say that's the first time I've heard it. But unfortunately, I've heard it hundreds of times. As a matter of fact, but, if, if I had a dime for every time yeah. I had it, I, I wouldn't have to do this. Uh, the, the, the thing I'm wondering, exactly. the thing I guess I'm wondering is simply this. Uh, it sounds to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds to me like what I'm hearing you say is that you are most concerned about obviously getting it to the, the people in the area and that, that sort of thing. But but selling it at a fair price, you're not trying to you know, really reach for the stars, but sell for a fair price and have just sort of a have a have a closing to where it, it all closes. And then you can take that money and then buy two other investment properties or so. Am I hearing that correct? Is that the overall plan? Yes. OK. No problem. And and the house that you're selling here, this one, is this also an investment property or was this a personal residence? No, no, it's an investment property. Uh, but those are the one, the big ones. I mean, it's not a mansion. These, I mean, four bedrooms, a pool. I mean, it's, it's uh, not to keep it as an investment. It's, okay. Uh, it costs me a lot of money. And oh, I, wanna, I believe it. I just said as an investor, you know, I've done it for 20 years now. I want to do little ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> You know, yeah, what, I'm wondering one, so that's it. That, that, you know, you've been really patient with me. And I, and the only reason why I'm asking is I wanted to ask something because I think maybe I can add something to your life that might give you some extra money. If you've got an extra second for a question or two, have you got an extra second? Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Good deal. All right. Uh, the, uh, when you say, and, and you don't have to get specific, I don't need to know dollars or anything like that. But is it fair to say that when you sell this property here, uh, you're you're going to make some kind of profit on it? Is that fair to say? 
out of profit. Yeah. Okay, and and you've I mean, and, 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 and you've owned it for less than five. Say more for you. And you've owned it for less than five years, right? I'm sorry. Uh, I... You you've owned it for less than five years. Oh, yes, 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 more than that, yes. You know, have you ever considered, I mean, what's the tax implications that you're going to face when you sell this property? Have you guys figured a plan for that? Well, I knew when my accountant told me that uh, I, I lived in this home, you know. I haven't lived in all of them, but at this one in particular, I lived. And uh, she told me because I lived there for more than a certain time that uh, I don't get to pay some taxes which so, one? i don't know but uh, so what she's saying that, uh, that so what she's so what she's telling you is that because you may have lived there for a specific period of time you may be able to avoid the capital gains tax uh because you may have lived there for a while is that what you're saying yes i, I, understand. Don't, I don't know what is the name of the tax <laughs> no but, problem yeah, yeah it's tax yeah. laws who knows it's no big deal well the the reason why i'm asking it is is actually that's what i was afraid of your accountant actually is is uh I'm not sure, you know, what sort of advice she's giving on on other things or whatever. Uh, I'm not going to speak to to that. I'm not qualified to. Uh -huh. But what I can say uh, unequivocally is that if this property is an investment property, and you know you're looking to sell this property and take the income from it and move it into other income property. Where you don't, you know, you're oh, not, yes. yeah, you're 10, not intending on living. 30, yeah, do a 1031 exchange, and that would save exactly, you. Yeah, yeah that would yeah, save uh, you yeah, an awful course, lot yeah. of money. And what I'm wondering is, yes, you told me that. Yeah. So yeah. my my question is, is your agent that you're talking about that brand new agent? Are they familiar with a 1031 exchange? I think so. Yeah, he, he's also an investor. He's my son's age, mm -hmm. thirty. He owns 18 homes, mm -hmm. and he started to build homes to sell. So he he's probably like me, you know, I like the business, an investor. So he knows exactly about that thing. And then, yeah, and I even mentioned it before, you know, make sure when you sell it or if anybody else sells it, uh, that I apply at 1031 because mm -hmm. I'm not invested in it yet. And okay, I well, know just, it has to be in a certain time. Do you, have, do you happen mm -hmm. to have a 1031 exchange person that you have in town that you re that you know I, I i don't know about that i don't know if it has to be somebody who who has a license or something well the, that. the funny oh, thing I is that, um, the funny thing is it does not have to be licensed because there's no license requirements it could be anybody but okay. the sad part is you don't want to use anybody because you're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars you want to have somebody that's responsible right. with it there's a couple of companies from the title company do all that no all the the, all those well what the title company does is they facilitate the paperwork but they do not facilitate the money, nor do they facilitate oh, the identification process. Yeah, yeah so okay. so here's okay. the thing. Here's the thing. I recognize that you know your your friend and your son's friend uh, owns property. I recognize that. Uh, I respect the fact that he's an, in an investor. Uh, I, I I would like to add, I think, to this that I myself am an investor. I've uh, been doing it for an uh -huh. awful long time. The the thing I guess I was pointing out is that uh, if 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 your thought is that, look, the only reason why I'm listing it with Tierra Antigua is because they're willing to drop the commission because he's you know willing to help me out and that sort of thing. I'm wondering how long did it take you to ask him to drop his commission? I mean, did you only have to ask him once, or did you have to ask him a bunch of times? No, actually, because my phone referred to me, mm -hmm. he never bugged me about I want to sell your home. And that's, that's one of the things that I, um, because majority, you know, um, they were saying, I want to lease your home. I want to meet you. And you get this service from us. And so, so he never offered it. He says, okay, um, uh, um, uh, Patricia, good luck. If you want to try to sell yourself, I wish you luck. And and um, if you ever get tired, that's one of the only thing he said. If you struggle with it, let me know, and uh, I can offer you uh, just a lower rate. Uh, just because you're an investor, I know you're, I can cap capture some of your business, and and it's, it's somebody that I know. Yeah. And he forgot about me for almost a month. 
that I tried to sell the home. And, and then he called me uh, two, two or three days ago. And then I said, is that percentage law still um, uh, offered? And he said, yeah, of course. Uh, mm-hmm. What happened to your house? You didn't get an answer. And, so and, so. and then I said, you know, I'm going to meet with you. I'm going to sign the papers. And I really wanted to do as an investor, you know, to do it myself, and especially my neighbor sold her house. I live here in Rancho Vistoso, and she's in. And she sold it for almost four hundred thousand, and it was like three or four weeks that they put it on Silo, not even on the MLS, but Silo. Mm-hmm. The only thing is, like I told you, I'm gonna be traveling in in, in Yellowstone Park. You know, we're not gonna be getting calls. Well, and so my, I really thought that, that commission is really worth it. You well, know? I I understand one hundred percent where you're coming from. It, it sounds like what I'm hearing you say, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that you're saying. The peace of mind that you're going to enjoy being in Yellowstone and all that, right. uh, you know, outweighs having to pay a two and a half percent commission to this fellow and another three percent to another agent who brings an agent or, or somebody by. Is that right? Right. And and so your right. feeling is that, you know, hey, for the two and a half percent it cost me to sell my home, I'm willing to do that because it gives me the peace. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Why? Makes sense. And I'm wondering... You know, and this fellow, you know, I don't know him. I'm sure he's a good guy. And you don't know me. You know, I'm wondering, you you owe your friend, your son, obviously, your friendship. Uh, you owe me absolutely nothing. But I think you owe, you would agree, I think you'd owe yourself the best. What I'm wondering is if you knew for a fact that I could sell your property with less stress, less hassle, you wouldn't have to deal with it and you'd still make more money at the end of the day. If I could do all of that, and that's a big what if, if I could do all of that, would you even consider talking with me at Sotheby's International? I uh, would we'll have to talk to my husband again because uh, said the final. Uh, we're leaving soon. Yeah, I noticed that it was, it was sort of a strange happenstance. Wouldn't you agree that I'm catching you right before you go to Yellowstone? <laughs> Don't you think that's odd? Yeah. I thought that was odd uh, well, too because I, I'm sitting here calling people and 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 talking and, and your phone came up and I'm thinking you know I, I thought I'd talk to you a couple of weeks ago but I thought you said your home had sold and uh, that's why I had asked and and then here oh gosh okay and now you're telling me that that you're getting ready to leave what what day are you leaving by the way is it in the next day or two yeah no 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 it's just one week more oh okay. but, uh, you know it's a lot of preparation and making sure oh, gosh, everything yeah. I live here well, you know, Patricia, and I don't mean to be forward. Please forgive me if if I'm if I'm offending you in advance. Please forgive me. I'm wondering, do you happen to be a Christian? I am. I am you know, I, I was wondering because I was thinking to myself, this might be something of the Lord, because sometimes I think God arranges things, and that's why I'd asked your forgiveness in advance, because sometimes you know people get put in places for serendipitous reasons. Wouldn't you agree? Right. Yeah. Tell you what, yeah. Patricia, you've been very p- patient with me. This is my cell phone. I'll text you in a yes. little while with my, with, you know, just a, a hi and a reminder, yeah. but yeah. would you do me a favor, Patricia? Would you, when you, when you go home tonight and pray with your husband, would you just pray about me? Just pray for me and, and see what the Lord says. Would you, would you do that for me? Very All right. Yes, of course. I'll do that. All right. I appreciate yeah, you, Patricia. You and I'll, and I will, in. and I will pray for you as well. What's your husband's name? I'll pray for him too. Steve. Steve. All right. Well, I'll pray for him too. All right. Well, listen, you guys, you you guys take care. All right. All right. God bless. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that one was a risky play. I will agree. That was a risky play. If you're watching that one, uh, you know, (laughs) you might be saying to yourself, what the heck are you doing? With the uh, with the God stuff, you know, and I totally uh, agree. I ordinarily would never, ever, ever do that. Uh, that's just uh, that's just one of those situations where I sort of felt, you know, sometimes you got to gamble. And right there, I felt like that was a good time. A good time if you're going to gamble. 
that's the right time. Because realistically, I, I believe in my heart, if she does list with this other, this other person, uh, I believe deeply in my heart that, uh, that you will make a mistake. If you list with a discount broker in any capacity, uh, you know, I, I just honestly believe uh, that you are shorting yourself, that you are uh, not able to, to give yourself the best exposure. Um, you know, that, that, that other agent, you know, is willing to just give up his commission just because he says so. Well, gosh, if you're willing to do that with your money, if you're willing to give away your money that quickly, how quickly will you give away an owner's money? You know, I'm a big believer that we need to get out there and fight for our commissions. We need to get out there and be, um, uh, you know, we need to demonstrate value. I mean, this is a, a this is a, this is a, a timely notice, right? Timely notice. Here we are talking about this entire issue of the U.S. residential real estate industry has faced criticism that it stifles competition amongst brokerages protecting agent commissions that are higher than those paid by sellers in many other countries. Other countries. You know, look, there is a perception amongst realtors. I'm sorry, amongst the public, okay? There's a perception amongst the public. Two, zero, six, four, seven, two. There's a perception amongst the public that buyer's agents, you heard her say it herself, you know, they do a majority of the work. They, uh, they're they the ones who are really, you know, really doing the, the, the heavy lifting and that the listing agents have it pretty easy. Now, if you've been a listing agent for more than a day, <laughs> you know that that's not true. There's no way that the buyer agent can find out about the house if it isn't for the listing agent putting the listing in the MLS and pricing it appropriately. If the listing agent doesn't make these calls, doesn't talk to the prospect, doesn't talk to them about the value of pricing their home appropriately or, you know, making sure it doesn't smell like cat urine or any of these other features, then the buyer's agents, they don't show up. And the reason why they feel this way is because realtors have been uh, his, uh, notorious about not demonstrating our value. You know, and here's the reason why is because agents just say, well, gosh, you know, well, I'll cut the commission is just a lot easier than learning the skill that it takes to work with them. Um, so then the, the investigative demand to core logic dated last month follows a lawsuit filed against the realtors association and real, uh, real estate broker franchises, including realology holdings corporation claiming they conspired to prevent home sellers from negotiating commissions. They pay to buyers agents. Ooh, that's uh, that's some heady talk. Now that's that's a big charge. You know, if you're going to say that 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 a company, Rheology Holdings is 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 and that's no small company. That's a huge company. They've got all <laughs> um uh, they got all kinds of companies under their umbrella. And and they're saying that they conspired. They didn't say that they were just thinking about it that they just kind of oopsied it that you know gosh gee willikers it would be better if we did this another way. No, they conspired is what they said that they conspired, okay, to prevent home sellers from negotiating commissions they pay to buyer's agents. The Realtors Association filed a motion to dismiss the lawsuit, arguing that it misunderstands the role of brokers. The trade group didn't immediately respond to a request for comment on the lawsuit or the Department of Justice investigation. Absolutely, they shouldn't comment because the case is meritless. You have reached Dr. L. Wissinger. I'm the case is meritless. You know, this this case is 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 just like every other case when it comes to this issue of antitrust. It simply stems from an issue where people fail to understand the role of brokerages. And the reason why they fail to understand the role of brokerages is because brokers themselves are not entirely clear on the way agents or agency works. I mean, it's, it's as simple as that. It's not... You know, it's not really hard. I mean, we had an article just a couple days ago, as a matter of fact, about this issue when we were talking about this issue of dual dis uh, dual agency. You know, the department, I'm sorry, the, uh, the National Association of Realtors came out saying, gosh, you know, we are starting to question this idea of dual agency because how can you, as an agent, represent yourself and somebody else or represent another person? And this is particularly interesting if you're in that wholesaling, investing kind of world. If you're an investor... Sorry, the person I'm going to throw this out to you, right? 
if you're an investor, just think this through. If you're a realtor who invests, you're rolling through the multiple listing service. You know, you're checking the hot sheet like you should every day. And uh, all of a sudden you see a property that's listed by your company, but it's, uh, you know, it's a nice little investment property, right? What do you do? I mean, how do you buy that property? I mean, I'm not saying that you can't, of course you can, but you, there's some thought process that goes through when you think about it with the legal issues, right? If you're buying it, it's not as simple as just writing a contract and boop, here you go and boom, shakalaka. No, it, it, you got this other step that goes involved, right? Yeah. Hello. Hey there. This, is, three, four, four, uh, nine, four. this thing's just so good sometimes. Um, it's not as simple as uh, just... Hello. Please leave your message for... It's not as simple as filling out a, uh, a contract. You have to fill out, say, a dual agency contract. <laughs> Hello? 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 Oh, boy. Are you the owner of that property on Camino Del, Del Dorado? Hello? No answer on that one. Okay. So, oops, there we go. Um, obviously, there's an issue of dual agency. If it's listed by your company and you come to buy it, theoretically, you're supposed to have a thought in your head to represent the seller's interests. But if you're a real estate investor, especially a realtor who's investing, it's kind of difficult to play that role if you're trying to represent your own interests. So you can quickly see how this issue of dual agency can come up as a problem. And if dual agency comes up in this minor of a problem, remember, this is a minor issue. This is a realtor, you individually, okay, buying a property that is listed by your company. It can't get any simpler of a problem than that because the only, you know, the solution clearly is one piece of paper, consent to dual agency and boom, shakalaka, you're solved. You know, obviously the, the buyer, I'm sorry, the seller. Yeah. Hello? 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 Right. Um, there we go. So, even that little bitty issue, it's very difficult when you think about the, uh, the 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 issue of agency. And so, it's really not a problem to see how uh, another company uh, would have you know a bunch of a bunch of problems, and then ultimately a lot of complaints going into the Department of Justice. Now, the Department of Justice, they're going to investigate what they have to do. I mean, they have to protect the public. That's what they have to do, and I get it. But this is not the first time that the Justice Department has come out, the Department of Justice has come out and tried to investigate the Department, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, National Association of Realtors or a Realtor Board for Antitrust. You know, when you think about it, there has been, on the other hand, there has been some times where, you know, hello? Hello? Where there's, uh, where there's been uh, the department, you know, it says here in June 2018, the Justice Department and Federal Trade Commission, which share an antitrust jurisdiction in the United States, held a workshop on the residential real estate brokerage industry that touched on the possible barriers to competition and impact of past regulatory issues, uh, actions amongst other issues. Now, the, the, the challenge that they're having, okay, with this whole problem, is identifying, ensuring, making sure that people are not saying that, gosh, you know, uh, it's only going to be available for a certain period of time to certain realtors. That's antitrust. Um, we're only going to charge a minimum amount of commission. And uh, sometimes, you know, you're, I'm going to tell you right now, another thing you're going to see here coming up soon, if you haven't seen it already, another thing you're going to see here pretty soon are these marketing fees. You know, people putting marketing fees on their listings and their sales and whatnot, you need to have a way to demonstrate that you're using that money. Okay, so if you're going to say it's for marketing technology and verification, well, then you better have some marketing. 
you need to have some technology and you better have some verification showing that, you know, that's what we spend that money on. Now, it doesn't have to be dollar for dollar and a, a clear train of, of, of evidence. No, but you do have to show, uh, I think, in the future where these dollars are coming from. And the reason why is very simple. It's because the public itself wants their demanding they're demanding transparency from realtors. And if they're demanding transparency from realtors, then you can be sure it's just a, a, around the corner that they'll demand it from you as a wholesaler or as an investor as well. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Uh, we're gonna go right back into geographic area here where I like to call. Uh, this particular area is one of my favorites. It's a high turnover area, central Tucson. Hmm. We've been calling this area for several days. The good news is that I have several hundred numbers uh, and we've been able <laughs> to make a lot of good contacts. Not been able to make any appointments out of here just yet, but uh, we've been able to go ahead and make at least one good buyer. Let's go ahead and get started with that one. And in the meantime, I'm gonna tell you about another thing that I found that I thought you might wanna hear about. Boy, this one, press go on that. All right, and resume. So we're dialing again. Something you definitely want to learn here. Uh, home price growth slows to the lowest level since 2012. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> this is from Realtor.com. They said that the home price growth slowed to its lowest level in nearly seven years in February. A clear sign that the housing market is moderating heading into spring. The S&P CoreLogic Case-Shiller National Home Price Index, which measures average home prices in major metropolitan areas across the nation, rose 4% in the year ending February, down from 4.2 in the prior month. Said that home price growth has been slowing for nearly a year. Welcome news for first-time home buyers who've been struggling to get into the market. Thus far, however, the easing in price growth has yet to translate into the stronger sales that real estate agents and economists had hoped for. That really is the key of this entire argument. <laughs> let, me, let me underline that and let me repeat that for you, right? It said, thus far, however, the easing in price growth has yet to translate yet to translate into the stronger sales that real estate agents and economists had hoped for. So let's talk about translation real quick. Translation. What they're saying is, look, realtor.com, SP Core Logic, Case Shiller, they're saying, look, the home price growth slowed down. It's, it's slowed down to its lowest level in seven years, the home price growth, how fast things have gone up, has slowed down to its absolute lowest. Hello? Hello? Erica? Hello? Hello, Erica? Uh, what they're saying is that, you know, it's been growing. Excuse me. It's been growing for seven years and it's been, it's been going up and up and up and up and up very quickly. However, it started to slow down. And as a matter of fact, eh, it's down from 4.2%. You know, it's been growing really fast, but then eh, it didn't really go quite so fast that much. And what they're saying is that in all of these areas that they've been marketing, that they've been watching the Case Shiller folks, they've been watching all this, all these areas that they're seeing, they're seeing that, that buyers have been, boy, that, that's great news that things aren't super expensive, that they're not rocketing out of control like they were before. But that's not translate. Hello? Hello? Hmm. Okay. Not being a very productive day, apparently. Uh, in case you're joining me late, you know, the other day uh, we had talked about a, uh, a listing appointment that I'd gone to. Uh, I think it was on the appointment setting video that I had made a couple of days ago of live prospecting. I made two or three appointments that day, and one of them 
was an expired listing. Uh, I was happy to report that I did go ahead and get that listing. Uh, if you wanted to uh, listen to me setting that appointment, it is publicly available on YouTube uh, or on my podcast at theredpillinvestor.com. Certainly can check that out there. Uh, if you'd like to hear the actual presentation, if you'd like to have me uh, or hear actually uh, what he said, I said, how the whole interaction went, uh, obviously it's sanitized. If you'd like to hear that, then feel free to check it out. It's available as well on the premium edition. It's a premium podcast. Now there's a whole bunch of premium podcasts available. All you got to do is just go to the redpillinvestor.com, look under premium podcast, and you're going to see a check-in sheet where you can go ahead and sign up for the premium podcast. And you'll have access to well over a hundred episodes that are premium podcasts by nature that are not available to the public that are available only for you. Uh, and as my thank you for helping me support the podcast. So let's get back to this issue of translation. You know, when they're talking about translating it, they're saying, look, that, that all these other properties are you know, having soft, there's pooling in the market like we've been talking about, but there's been no translation of price. Why? Well, because agents like you and I have not been hammering sellers telling them the truth. You know, if you heard my rant yesterday about this, you have to know how I feel about this. You have to know how I feel about this. This cannot go on. This can't go on. You can't have homes go up and up and up and up in value and people with increasing amounts of debt being unable to purchase these properties. And it begins, as I mentioned before, at the lower end and it works all the way to the top and it ends top to bottom. And that's the way life works. At least the real estate life works. And we're foolish to, 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 to think otherwise. A lot of you young realtors, uh, young, I'm young myself. I'm, when I say young, I mean new to the business, okay? A lot of you new guys, new gals, you don't understand what it's like to be throat punched by the market. When the market ceases to operate in this easy fashion as it is, you know, it's going to show who really knows what they're talking about. Because it's easy to be smart in an easy market. Oh, sure, you look smart, you made good decisions, you saved the day, blah, blah, blah. When the market's going great, it's super easy to do that. But when the market starts to decrease or become difficult or harder to sell, all those little games you were playing and all that other stuff, that's not going to work anymore. And only the people who have the sales skills and the ability to confront sellers are going to be able to survive. Make no mistake about it. The lady that we were talking earlier with, uh, the agents like that that are just cutting commissions, how, how, how much can you cut when everybody else is cutting? How much, how low will you go? How far will you sell yourself before you finally say enough and get a real job? You know, you need to be the person, in my opinion, going to your center of influence right now and telling them, look, this is what's coming. They don't have to believe you, but you have to tell them. It's your job. It's your duty. It's your responsibility as a practicing realtor, as somebody who says that they care about their community. You have a responsibility to inform them about the market. And it's not like they're sitting there, oh, you know what? I'm going to go home and I'm going to read the, the latest real estate articles. They don't They do not do that. They're, they're, they're in their Game of Thrones and whatever, <laughs> whatever else is on these days, right? They don't count. They, they count on you. And, and if you don't take the time, if you're out there playing these games and being a silly boy, wasting your time, wasting your abilities by playing video games and wasting away, not conning your contenting your or calling your con your contacts, well, 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 then you have every right to get drummed out of this business because you brought nothing of value to it. I'm sorry. It's hard for me to feel sorry for you if you're not willing. Hello? Hello? Matila? No, Matila. Huh? 
Hang on just a second. There we go. If you're not going to bring anything of value to your clients, if you don't bring anything of value to your customers, I don't understand how you can say that you really care about them. And I don't see how you can say that you deserve this extraordinary amount of money you think you deserve. That's that that also is a big problem is the amount of money you get paid is, is retarded. It's ridiculous the amount of money we get paid for what we do. I'm not saying that, you know, you aren't worth it if you bring value to it, but goodness, you know, you've got so many deals out there, three, four hundred thousand dollars, and you go out and you take a listing, and this lady says, gosh, you just put it in MLS, and then you get a sale. Yeah. That's what a lot of people think. And you know what? That's what a lot of agents do in a market like this. In a $150,000 home, a $75,000 trailer, whatever. I mean, yeah, you can do that. But you're talking about three, four, five, six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars properties. You need to have somebody who's willing to come in there and negotiate a little bit harder for you because there's a little bit more dollars on the table. It's easier when there's, you know, fifty, sixty thousand dollar house or whatever or whatnot, a hundred thousand dollar houses. Nobody has any money. You can only, you can only negotiate so far that before somebody's broke. But when you're starting to talk with three, four, five, six hundred thousand dollar homes, yeah, you got a lot of equity. Somebody says they, they, that that oh yeah, they know about ten thirty one exchanges. Or, oh, is that a fact? Well, then if they're a ten thirty one exchange, you know that you can't do that if you're living in it and you didn't live in it. So you can't, you know, whatever your CPA is telling you is nonsense. So either you're lying or CPA is lying. This is the value you have to bring to this equation. If you don't take the time to learn your craft, then yeah. You deserve to get drummed out of your business. It's just like the people who go to LA who say that they want to be a movie star. Look, you want to do something extraordinary with your life? Do something extraordinary to get it. If you want to be extraordinary, if you want to be amazing, if you want to do something that nobody else can do, take the time, learn the skills, and risk the chances of looking like a fool. That's my advice to you. Let's move on to the last one. Last story for the day, guys. I really appreciate you tuning in. Last story is homeowners fault the government. Hello? Hey, Jerry? Jerry? Oh, boy. Hmm. All right, well. I might even end up calling some for sale by owners here before too long. <laughs> so homeowners fault the government for Hurricane Harvey damage. This is uh, coming at us from Realtor.com. Um, actually, it's actually from uh, the Wall Street Journal uh, in Katy, Texas. You know, if you've if you've uh, ever had a chance to go to Katy, Texas, it is a beautiful town. I love Katy, Texas. It, you know, that whole area is just fantastic. So shout out to my Texas folks. I absolutely love your state. Uh, Katy, Texas, with lush parks, solid schools nearby, and its proximity to Houston, the Cinco Ranch, <laughs> Cinco, Cinco Ranch planned community seemed the perfect place for Elicio and Anasaurus to buy a home after moving to the United States from Brazil. Amen. Hallelujah. We got some good folks moving to the United States from the Brazil, but only after Hurricane Harvey swamped their dream home in August 2017 with seven inches of water did the couple learn something they say they were never told after 18 years there. Their home was built on the edge of a dry reservoir. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers designed to hold water during severe storms to protect downtown Houston from flooding. So picture this. You've lived years in a home in a planned unit community you moved here from brazil amen and for 17 years you've lived in the states you've 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 you know been here and been a taxpayer and been a citizen and i assume voting and do all of the good things that you need to do and then after this hurricane your home gets swamped with seven inches of water hello hello emily hello well i'll tell you i'm not having too much luck today 
So, so here they are with seven inches of water in their property. Could you imagine? I mean, good gracious, those people with Hurricane Harvey, I just feel so sorry for them. And I feel sorry for the Soros's, I really do. But did, I'm just wondering, 17 years, did, did, did you never really see that, that, that dry reservoir? Did it never occurred to you what that no. might be? Good morning. Hello? Hello? Hmm. I just, I mean, I'm not trying to be critical. <laughs> I'm not trying to be critical. But she says, or, uh, Mr. Soros was quoted as saying, Hello? Hello? What in the world is going on? Hmm. How come nobody ever told us, said Mr. Soros, uh, whose home incurred roughly $100,000 in damage from Harvey. Holy cow. That's an awful lot of damage. Said nothing from the government or anybody saying, hey, beware, you're buying property inside the reservoir, he said. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh how, uh, first, you're not in the reservoir. As I understand this, and I'm, I'm not familiar with, you know, this particular Cinco Ranch community, but apparently it, it said that the Army Corps of Engineer built uh, this reservoir uh, many years ago and that their home was built on the edge of a dry reservoir. Not in the reservoir, according to the reporting, it was on the edge of a dry reservoir. Then... Uh, the, US Department, the U.S. Justice Department, which was representing the government, obviously, uh, is argued in court filings that the flooding was a one-time temporary occurrence that doesn't reach the necessary legal threshold for payment and that residents should have known they were living in an area vulnerable to flooding. Oh, boy. That doesn't look good. Oh, my goodness. You know, what, what happens what happens? You know, I, I can think of this particular community here in Tucson. Good morning. Hello. Hmm. You know, I'm getting this suspicion that there is something wrong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and end. Uh, let's see that. I'm going to go back. Because for whatever reason, this does not seem to be appearing I don't know what it is. I just, I get, you know, you get these feelings that some, for some reason it's just not working right. You, you don't, uh, they should be hearing you, right? But you don't hear them. And then it's like, it doesn't seem right. So what I'm going to do, let me, let me call and these for sale by owners that I might have left here. Let's give them a shout. Let's see how long we've been prospecting here or calling. We've been for almost an hour. Gosh, this is disappointing, guys. You know, one of the things I always want to tell you, you definitely definitely want to remain consistent because it doesn't always work out sometimes. Uh, let's see here. Oh, no, no, no. I don't want to do that. All right. So we're getting into the sell by owners here. Okay, this is going to be a little bit different. Let's see what happens. Oh boy, this house was built in 2017. I don't want to bother with that one. It's way out of the way. We'll delete that one. And let's see, this next one is... Let's see, let's take a quick look at that. All right, let's give these people a call start dialing. All right. So I guess my point is that what do you do? I mean, I, I remember that, that here in Tucson, there was a, uh, I remember in Tucson, there was a, a place that, um, 
actually was in Marana. So to be truthful, it was just north of Tucson. And the, uh, the property itself uh, was, was, was built on this area that it was just not, uh, the, 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 the soils were expansive. And so a lot of people were having problems with uh, their foundations cracking and unlevel and, and problems with doors being un unlevel. It's just not a very good situation. It was quickly discovered within just a couple of years of these homes being built and they were able to go back to the builder and say, hey, uh, you had a problem. You made these on expansive soils. You didn't do the crocker, you know, the correct testing and you didn't do the proper fixing and they got a remedy from the law from that. And, and I think that's understandable. But what do you do? Gosh, what do you do? When the Army Corps of Engineers build an Attucks and Barker Dam west of Houston in, the, in Houston in the 1940s as part of a broader flood management plan. And unlike some reservoirs, the areas only fill, fill with water during heavy rainfall. Most days, the more... Hello? The Hello? Hello? Most days, uh, it says that uh, the more than 25,000 acres is a serene expanse of grassy parkland, golf courses. Good morning. Hello. Okay. So something's not right. So what we're going to do is we're just going to hang up this session here, right? And... Uh, the dialer apparently is is not working properly or something because I, I don't see how I'm getting all these people picking up the phone and yet nobody talking. That makes absolutely no sense to me. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to end up with this final thought here with these people. But basically it says that uh, that these people, you, you can think of these types of properties around your areas where you live and maybe in the areas that you invest. If you're an investor, if you're a realtor, undoubtedly you know the types of properties we're talking about. They're the little parks that's got a really deep section in it, you know, and, and perhaps, uh, you know, you, if you've been there in town for a number of years, you know what that is. Uh, it's certainly a good idea to bring that to people's attention, even if the likelihood is going to be a one in 500 year flood. Uh, it's certainly a good idea, I think, to document those things because realistically, these people, I'm not saying that they could come back 17 years later to the agent or the builder or whoever sold them the property. And I really do feel sorry for the Soruses because goodness gracious, seven inches of water in your property is unbelievable. However, you've lived next to this retention basin for 17 years. And it's really difficult for me to see how you didn't know. Guys, listen, even though uh, it seems like it should be common knowledge that they should know it, right? Uh, then you, you need to put it in writing. You need to put it at the very minimum uh, at the, an email format where you're disclosing it to them. Uh, it said that residents and their lawyers say, quote, it's unreasonable to suggest that potential buyers would sift through the U.S. geological survey maps to learn about the area before buying. What? Caveat and poor be damned, I guess. Listen, guys, your, your, your seller property disclosure statements that your agents and, and, and whatnot... Okay, it's going to ask about flood zone. Definitely, why not use those seller property disclosure statements? I know a lot of re realtors, brokers out there uh, say, gosh, you know, this is a wholesale deal. I don't need to worry about that. No, 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 no. Get all that stuff. Get all that information out. You need to have it because think about it. This is not just a $5,000 deal. Okay, $5,000 transactions in your head. Okay, that's, that's small potato thinking. If you want to make big money, you got to stop thinking this small thinking, these deal by deal things. You have to think long term. The things you do today have a 17 year consequence or more. Look, if they wanted to, they're saying, look, if they wanted people to know, you just got to come out and tell them, said Vuk, Vuk, Vuk Vucenovich. Well, I don't know. I guess that's his name. I have all respect to him. I can't remember. I can't pronounce his name. Vuk, Vuk, 
Vuk Vasanovich, I guess. He's a lawyer representing the people. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Believe it or not, there's an awful lot of people, awful lot of people from Harvey who have been, who have been suing the federal government because of this stuff. Oh, boy. You know, I'm certainly not qualified to talk about Texas, and I'm certainly not qualified to talk about uh, their law or their disclosure or any of that nature. But I think I am certainly qualified to mention when it comes to the issue of being a wholesaling or an investing real estate agent, the importance of you to make sure you do all the disclosures that you can so that you can protect yourself from 17 year disappointments. Well, guys, I'm sorry that this, uh, that this particular prospecting episode was a bust. It didn't really seem like it came out that well, but I did go ahead and get that listing from this week. And uh, the final thing I would probably throw in your ear from this week's prospecting is this, that if you're consistent, uh, then you will generate leads, you will generate appointments, and you will get better over time. And because you get better over time, you'll be able to go ahead and make more money and it won't take you as long. I recognize that buying and selling and all that is, uh, I'm sorry, buying and uh, buying property or calling people on the phone and all that's becoming passe. I realize it's probably not the, the hot latest thing to do. Uh, but, you know, gosh, uh, it only took me 152 contacts uh, to go on six leads. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, to generate six appointments to get one listing. And that listing was, what, two, $280,000? And I, I charge a 6% commission for that one. So, and you can charge whatever commission you charge. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not suggesting you charge anything, uh, but that's what I did. And that's what worked for me. And it only took me a week to get a listing. So I would highly encourage you to go back, listen to the premium podcast, watch these videos, listen to those podcasts. If you, if you don't have time to watch it on video, then definitely go over to the podcast because I record them there. Listen to them there. Uh, in your leisure, pick up a tip or trick, take it to your community. I just pray that you'd use it and 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 I'd hope that you'd make some money out of it and that you'd be able to bless the people in your family and everybody around you. Thank you so much for all the time you spend with me. Thank you so much for sharing this. I really am very grateful for any attention that you've given this channel and I appreciate you so much. I pray for you. I hope you have a great weekend and as always have a powerful sales day. Bye-bye.